Paul, when we talk about ultimate reality and try to ask the big questions of theology and science and ultimate uh, uh, cause, uh, a lot of a lot of issues pile up on the table, all of which are fascinating. What I'd like to try to do is organize these by asking you, when you think about these really big questions, how, how would you characterize them? What kind of what kind of uh, categories would you use? First of all, we've got technical scientific questions. Uh, these are questions which um, go beyond the edge of what is normally done in science and ask the, the questions that lie beyond that. So, for example, the laws of physics are accepted as given by almost all physicists. They just get on with the job of applying them. Very rarely stop to ask, what are those laws of physics? Where do they come from? And why do they have the form that they do? Mm. That's one set of questions. Um, then there's a set of questions having to do with um, uh, the with cosmology, with the origin of the universe. Uh, has the universe always existed in some form, or did it come into existence at some finite time in the past? And if so, was that the ultimate origin of uh, everything, space, time, matter, energy, the whole lot? And similarly, at the other end, will the universe uh, go on forever, or is it going to uh, eventually come to an end in one form or another, and if so, what form? So, so these are the sort of bounding technical problems uh, of physics and cosmology. But then there's another set of issues which I find uh, really fascinating, which is why can we do this thing called science? Why is it possible for a small part of the universe, you know, namely <laughs> this uh, bit between my ears, to come to comprehend the totality of things, at least in part? Uh, how is it uh, the case that the universe is structured in such a way that it will bring forth uh, these things we call living beings that have the ability to decode the deepest processes of nature? Mm -hmm. That I find truly fascinating. Uh, and uh, even if it's possible in principle, why is it the case that uh, the, the history of evolution has actually given rise to beings that can do it? Uh, it's one thing to have something possible, another thing to have it actually occur. And was that inevitable in some way in this universe, or <clears throat> is it just a pure accident, which right, right. Is most just scientists a lucky generally fluke, say? Uh, just a lucky fluke, or is there something going on that's connecting the emergence of life and mind to the deepest processes of the universe, mm. which is what, what I believe. Uh, and so this very fact that we can do science, I think, is, uh, is deeply significant. And then, of course, we can ask questions like, well, is um, the power of science virtually unlimited? Can we come to know everything? Or will there always be some mm. sort of mystery uh, at, at the end? That will we uh, uh, go so far and no further? Because, of course, there's more to this than just uh, our intellectual abilities. There's the, the sheer financial aspect. Uh, so, for example, you want to build a particle accelerator, it costs some serious fraction of a country's uh, GDP. You're not going to build one a million times uh, bigger. So there may be certain technological and financial limits to what we can ever learn about the world. Are there logical limits too? Well, there are logical limits, that's right. There are certain things which uh, come from the foundation of logic that show that, uh, in a sense, the universe can never be a closed system, that there's always questions that can be formulated in a way that can never, even in principle, be answered from within that uh, system of uh, reasoning. So um, uh, I think uh, the conclusion is we can't uh, ever be all-knowing, uh, but nevertheless we can come to understand the universe in extraordinary depth, and I think that that is, uh, for me, the, the, the most mysterious thing. See, we can e easily imagine a universe that's put together in a way that's either too complicated or too subtle, for any thinking being to ever comprehend, uh, and then uh, or, or so uh, non-regular uh, that you have not either, sufficient regularities that you can mess. even make sense out of it. Either it's a mess. That's right. Or the other curious fact, which is often not remarked upon, is that we can come to understand some things without knowing everything. You you think that nature mm. is a, a deeply entangled unity. And yet we can isolate little bits of it and make progress and come to understand, say, the, the motion of falling bodies or something without having to know all of the other laws and uh, what's going on elsewhere in the universe. So it's sort of decomposable in this way. Uh, and so we can 
knock off the problems in bite-sized yeah. pieces. So the universe didn't have to be put together like that. It just happens to be structured in such a e way. Even if those bite-sized pieces that. ultimately are related down below to some fundamental rules, the bite-sized pieces really do have total uh, uh, independence, sufficient at least, right. to, to be able to be to understood. Be, that's right. And, and then we can begin to build the whole yeah. thing together and, uh, and, and tackle the whole. I think it's just wonderful. You can do that. I mean, I, you know, if, for me, science is like my religion. I think yeah. it's yeah. just so fantastic that human beings have the ability to decode nature in that way, uh, that we can do the mathematics, that we've got the power of doing that. It's not beyond us to actually write down the equations mm. describing the universe and that we can pay for the experiments yeah. uh, to unravel it. I think this is just astonishing. And most people just take it for granted. They think, well, of course science works because, you know, it always has. But it's not obvious at all, this thing that we call science. So I think it's marvelous that we can do it. So let me see if I have this. We have, we've divided the nature of ultimate reality into two kinds of categories. One are the, 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 the facts of the matter, and you, I think you put it in two categories, physical law and then cosmology, questions of origins and endings mm -hmm. of the whole universe, and that's under the technical things. And then there's this whole broad, exciting, uh, uh, enlivening category of comprehensibility and what it means to be have a universe that's comprehensible and, and what it means to be comprehensible and decomposability or the uncertainties involved in that. And so these two broad ways are the ways of understanding. That's right. And, uh, and I still find it truly astonishing that we can do this. And I think it's a, a, a fact to be celebrated in its own right, that even if uh, you, you didn't believe in any sort of God, any sort of meaning or purpose in the universe, you can, could still, and many of my colleagues do, still celebrate science for its magnificence and, uh, and for the fact that, that humans can be part of this wonderful cosmic detective story.